Okay, so those were the minifigures, and now let's check out. Hey guys, it's Evan, and you guys wanted to see me build another big Lego set, so today I'm gonna be building the Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage. This is set 75936. It's 3,120 pieces, and it's recommended for ages 16 and up. It comes with six minifigures. We have Ian Malcolm, Ray Arnold, John Hammond, Ellie Sattler, Alan Grant, and Dennis Nedry. And of course, we have the T-Rex. You guys know that I've built T-Rexes before in LEGO, but you really just have to have the body and snap on the head. With this, it's an actual dinosaur, so you, it's really big, and it's made out of a bunch of pieces, big as the, the gates. It looks like the T-Rex measures 69.4 centimeters, or 27.3 inches long. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the box. So here we have some characters from the movie and you can recreate some iconic scenes. Hey, what's Nick Fury doing in here? So on the inside of the gate, it looks like there's some buildings with some rooms, but um, obviously there's nothing in the gate. These are just taken from other parts in Jurassic Park and just stuck into the gate. Okay, so this looks like a pretty cool set. So let's see what's inside. All right, we got a big white box. I'm guessing everything's in there. We got bag eight, bag six, bag three, Bunch of pieces, bag nine, bag 13, bag 13 again, bag two, bag 11, bag 15, bag 11, bag 15, <laughs> bag 15, bag two, bag three, a little base plate, and bag nine. Okay, let's see what's in this white box. Bag five, bag 10, bag seven, bag uno, bag seven, bag 12, we got the booklet and the stickers, bag five, bag four, Bag 14, bag 12, bag 10, bag 14, bag one, bag four. Okay, we got everything. And here's a look at the book. It's really cool on the back because it has a claw mark through it. So we got a pile of bags here, kind of looks like some Triceratops poo, but yeah, let's get building. Okay guys, so here's the completed Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage, and let's start off with the minifigures. Okay, so first we have Ian Malcolm. He's wearing a black jacket, but he has no undershirt, so it just shows his hairy chest. He has all these beads of sweat on his face and on his chest. The skin on his body doesn't really match his face at all. It's like a different shade. And he also has a tear in his pants, which shows some of his skin and like a bandage around it. 
So he has two faces. One is his stern expression, and the other one is a shocked, surprised face. Next we have Ray Arnold, played by Samuel L. Jackson, Mr. Nick Fury himself in the movie. He has some curly hair and he has a mustache. He's wearing a white lab coat with his ID on it and the Jurassic Park logo. And he also has a tie on underneath. And he has plain black pants. And the one thing that I think is cool about his outfit is that the lab coat extends onto his pants. He has two faces. One's a shocked face and the other is just like a normal happy face. All right, so next we have John Hammond himself, the creator of Jurassic Park. He has his tan hat on, his little safari hat. He has a white beard. He's wearing a short sleeve white button up shirt and it has two pockets on it. The back just has some printing on it. And he has completely white pants, so nothing special about his outfit. And the cool thing that he has though is the amber staff to remind him of where the DNA came from. Next, we have Ellie Sattler. She has a blonde ponytail. She has brown shorts because you can see the skin underneath and then brown shoes. She has a pink shirt and underneath is a gray shirt. And for her face, she has one kind of like happy, like smug face and the other one is kind of a nervous face. Next we have Alan Grant. He has the exact same hat that John Hammond was wearing. He has a blue button up shirt with two pockets also like him. And he has a red scarf and it looks like he just has some light khakis on. There's no printing on his pants. And he's holding the raptor claw that he scared the kid with at the beginning, saying that it was gonna rip him open. And he has only one face, actually. He doesn't have any shocked face. Um, he's just always happy. Finally, we have Dennis Nedry. Um, he has some black curly hair. I think this guy's Newman from Seinfeld. He's wearing a yellow hoodie, and on the back of it, it says Jurassic Park. And on the inside, he's just wearing like a gray shirt with his name tag on it and the Jurassic Park logo. And he has plain, no printed on pants. It's just some brown pants. He has kind of like an angry, evil expression on. He's like, hee hee. And he has a bunch of venomous ink on his other face. He's not liking that. He's like, ah, and his eyes are closed. And there's this cool stand that you can put all the minifigures on. There's some cool plants and even like a little raptor right there. And there's like a base plate and it basically talks about information about the T-Rex. Okay, so that was a look at the minifigures. And now it's time to take a look at this bad boy, the T-Rex. This T-Rex has some good weight to it. It's not light. So let's start down here at the tail. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the colors really quick. There's three shades of brown. There's a dark, medium, and a light tan. The tail is segmented, so it can kind of like sway back and forth like this. It looks really cool. You can pose this T-Rex in a bunch of different ways. You can rotate this guy's leg all the way around. Ooh, that looks like it hurts. He has these gray giant feet, and each toe you can move side to side, except for the big middle one. So you can actually lift the claws up and then down. And on the back, there's also a claw and you can just like move it down. Up in the front, we have two little tiny T-Rex arms. So he has two ball joints, one on the shoulder and one on the elbow. And you can just like move them around like this, which is pretty cool. And he has two claws. Um, you can just move them up and then down. His head's pretty cool. It's attached with a single ball joint and you can just like move them around like this. Ah, ah. See, if you lift his head up, gravity will just pull it back down like that. So part I think this is really cool is that his jaw is jointed. So you can like open it up just a bit like that. Open and close it. And he has this tongue and a bunch of spiky teeth on the top and on the bottom. So that's what it looks like. The last thing you see before you get eaten by a T-Rex. Nom. He even has some nostrils on the front. There's a ratchet joint on the neck that lets you move his head up and down. There's a little Easter egg that's hidden inside of the T-Rex. The only way to see it is if you break this guy apart. But inside the center of his body is a little green frog. And that's to represent the frog DNA that they had to use for the missing dino DNA. Oh wait, I've been calling this dinosaur a guy. I think this dinosaur is actually like a girl. Um, all the dinosaurs are girls in Jurassic Park. Ah! <laughs> this T-Rex is extra flexible. Woo! Okay, so I think we're gonna let this guy take a little break. And now, Let's bring on the gates. This thing looks pretty cool. It looks just like how it looks in the movie. And um, I went to Universal Studios and they had like a real live version of this gate. So it's got the Jurassic Park logo right up here on the sign. It's made out of three stickers. One that says Jurassic, one that says Paw, and the one that says RK. And together you get Jurassic Paw RK. So there's like eight flames down here and these took a long time to build, dude. You got to build this thing, put on the stud, stick the thing inside, whatever. Um, let's go down to the bottom. This was the hardest part to build in the whole set. 
This is so tedious, putting it all in the right places. Um, we have a bunch of different like, leaves, we got some flowers, and then a bunch of vines that go up the side. On the other side, it pretty much mirrors it, except it has like this one unique red flower. It took a long time, but it really does make it look like it's in nature. There's like some tracks right here, so like a truck or a car can go through it, and some treading right here, like it went through the mud, which I think is really cool. Without further ado, let me introduce you to Jurassic Park. No, 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 no. So let me turn this thing around and show you how I just did that. Up here at the top, there's this like little knob and you can just like move it back and forth to open up the gates, which is really cool. Up here at the top, we have a nest with hatched dinosaur eggs and then we have a bunch of green leaves and vines. So this is kind of weird. I um, mean, it has a bunch of different scenes from the movie inside of the gate. Obviously in the movie, they don't take place in the gate, but this is just supposed to be kind of like a memorial that just shows all of the events that happened. So we're gonna start off with the left side. So here's the scene where Nedry drops the can. You can actually see the can in there and it rolls down and gets lost. So here's Hammond's lunch. He has like um, a sweet roll, some jello and some ice cream. So I don't know if he's the healthiest man, but there's also some like donuts over there and he has a chair right here to sit on. So here is where Ian Malcolm gets treated for his wounds. Um, you can just put them on here. There's a fire extinguisher, a ladder, and then just like a bunch of other things like a crate. Right here we have the famous toilet scene. The lawyer guy sits down on the toilet and then the T-Rex bites his whole body off um, while he's sitting on the toilet. This toilet's supposed to be in like an outhouse somewhere in the middle of the park. But here we have it in the gate. So just before you enter the park, you can go to the bathroom. Right here we have all the computers and then the chair right here. And this is where Arnold sits. So we're gonna stick him in here like so. And now he can go do his work. And finally, we have the coolest scene. This is where Ellie is trying to reset the breaker and turn the power back on. But no, look at this. We have Arnold's hand and you can just like flop it around. I've never seen this before. Just like a dead Lego hand. And on the other side holding this arm in place, there's a red stud. So kind of violent for Lego. It's kind of interesting. The side panels, you can just like lift up like this. Can a guy get some privacy in this place? This sounds pretty cool, but I probably would have included other stuff like the hunter guy Muldoon and also like the lawyer that got his head bit off um, while he was on the toilet. It also doesn't have the kids or Dr. Wu, but we got him in another set if you remember. Ah, open the gate, open the gate. Uh, who is it? Wu. Wu? It's Wu, it's Wu. Woohoo! And it's kind of missing a car to go on these tracks. So I got Hawkins Police Department's finest right here. And yeah, let's, let's see. Hmm, this doesn't look like Hawkins. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. How am I supposed to get in here? Open sesame! Hey, it worked. Okay, here goes nothing. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. So that's what happens to Hopper guys at the beginning of season four. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry. Jurassic Park X Stranger Things crossover. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe with notifications on, share with your friends, and leave a comment telling us what kind of Lego sets you want us to build. Any, any Lego, anything, any video it is, just let us know. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I think it's time to find a new career.